Hello, we're so happy to be here. What a gift. Yes, we are here to have some fun. So are you here to have some fun? Let's have some Come fun. On. I'm going to have fun. fun. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Imagine you're the developer in this diagram, <clears throat> and you work at a company that provides a very important software product, Rainbows as a Service. Uh. Now, your, <laughs> your company is dominating the Rainbows industry, and it wants to stay on top. So we've commissioned Gardner reports, we've put together a think tank of all the industry thought leaders, and we've identified the next big trend in the rainbows industry. Do you want to know what it is? Because <laughs> I really want to know what it is with me. Tell us. It's spiders. What? what? I think spiders are literally the opposite of a rainbow. That's a little shocking. <laughs> so anyway, you're the developer in this diagram, and it's your job now to add the spider to the rainbows and push it to production. And when you do that, your change is immediately live in front of all of your company's end users. This is scary. And I'm not just talking about the creepy spider here. This is scary because if you slow down, if, you, if your application has problems, you can slow it down and cause problems for the end users. Or worse, you could be the cause of your company's most dreaded fear. Bum, 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 downtime. These are high stakes. Well, well, well. Why causing downtime or frustrating your usage is something that you should try to avoid. We need to agree that this diagram here is a drastic oversimplification of what happens when a developer pushes code. OK, OK. Right? I'll give you that. It's an oversimplification. How about this? That's a little more accurate, wouldn't you say? Uh, it looks a little bit better. <laughs> um, where is the developer there? Oh, oh OK. Yeah. Uh, the developer is way over there on the left. Right the production's on the right. Yep. yep. But don't, uh, don't worry if you don't understand everything that's going on in this diagram. In fact, don't worry if you don't understand most of what's going on in this diagram. Uh, the, the point is for us to show you that it is a lot. It is complicated, and it has to be complicated when you're building complex distributed systems that are meant to scale across millions of users. That's true, and the question that we are asking and trying to answer during this presentation is how much of this entire landscape do you need to actually understand in order to be efficient at your work? Yeah. So to begin to answer that question, let's talk about Kubernetes. By, by using Kubernetes <laughs> and the power of the Kubernetes APIs, companies have a clear separation between infrastructure and application development teams. Uh, infrastructure teams can focus on provisioning hardware and VMs if they are working on-premise, or choosing their favorite cloud provider, as most of these cloud providers already support the Kubernetes APIs. On the other hand, application development teams have a very powerful API and a declarative API to deploy their workloads, no matter where that infrastructure lives. So that's a good thing, but we need to agree that this is yet again another drastic oversimplification of what happens. Well, it's very helpful that application teams now don't have to deal with the infrastructure directly. There are still some challenges. For one, it can be a challenge to train big teams to use Kubernetes. And let's be honest, not every developer wants to learn how to use Kubernetes. Another challenge is that there are so many amazing projects in the CNCF landscape, and it often falls on developers and application teams to research these projects and figure out how best to extend their Kubernetes cluster for their particular use case. And our application team needs to be writing code. They should be thinking about adding the spider to the rainbows application. Spiders, spiders, spiders. <laughs> so welcome the heroes of our story, platform teams. More larger and mature organizations that have been, have been working with Kubernetes for some long time are starting to create platform teams to build platforms on top of Kubernetes. They do that by trying to understand what tools application development teams need and try to hide all the complexity of installing, managing, and operating these tools, putting everything behind a very friendlier platform API. This platform API can be used by application development teams to self-service, to have access to all these tools and things that they need to work using a self-service approach. Look at that platform. That, what a friendly, very friendly. friendly API. I want to invite them to my birthday party. You should, you should. Yeah, I hope they yeah. say yes. OK, so the platform team starts to build a platform first by collaborating with application teams. This is a very important step. They need to deeply understand the tools and processes that the application teams are currently using and what those pain points are. 
then they can figure out the best way to help and encode that knowledge into our friendly, friendly platform API that then the application teams can uh, access in a self-service way. So for example, our application team needs a development environment to be able to add the spider to the Rainbows application. So our developer asked the Friendly Friendly Platform API for that environment. And lo and behold, without any human intervention, that environment gets created. And it has a speedy spider cache and the spider database. And not only that, but the environment comes pre-configured with security and governance policies that the application team doesn't even need to worry about. There you go. And this takes us to our first demo of the presentation, where we are going to interact with our platform APIs to request a new development environment. So what we are seeing here in this recorded demo, I would, I would love to do it live, <laughs> but I couldn't. So basically, I'm part of the Arachnid team, and what we are doing here is we are going to request a new environment. And we can do so by sending a request like this, which basically we have extended the Kubernetes API to understand about environments. You can select the type of environment by setting a label, and also then, as you can see there, setting up some parameters that are very, very specific to the, the, the needs that I have, right? Like in this case, having a spider, a spider database or a cache. As you can see, I'm sending like this request using kubectl because it's a Kubernetes resource, and voila, the platform just created an environment. You can actually run this demo live. We will share some URLs later on. Uh, because it's a Kubernetes resource, you can query all your environments using kubectl or any other tool in the Kubernetes space. And then you can see there that the environment is not ready yet, but we will use this environment in our next demo, and we will deploy some workloads into that. Yep. Excellent. So what we just saw was Mauricio interact with the friendly platform API. And behind the scenes, the platform API used Crossplane and Helm together to create that development environment. That development environment is an isolated virtual cluster made with the cluster, and it has Knative serving pre-installed into it. The good thing about these things is that you don't really need to understand how Crossplane, Helm, Knative, or vCluster works, because that's the whole purpose of having a platform, API, a platform team creating these platform APIs that allows us to send a simple request to create a bunch of things for us. Excellent. So we saw how the platform team can help application teams uh, provision development environments in a self-service way. But platform teams can also make the developer experience better by providing more widely scoped tools that for the application team makes the right thing to do the easy thing to do. So for example, they could um, create templates and quick starts so that developers can start their projects easily and by following company policies right from the beginning. They can also curate, maintain, and continuously patch tools like cloud native build packs that automate the way application source code gets built into container images. And finally, the platform can provide a catalog of ready-made solutions that application teams can then extend. So solutions like Tekton pipelines or Helm charts. And that takes us to our second demo, right? We're going to basically create and deploy a function using a project that is called Knative Functions into the development environment that we just created. So we are, what we are going to see here in the demo is that we are going to first check that our environment is ready to be used. That's why we run that command. It is ready. And now we are going to use bcluster connect because we use bcluster to create the cluster, so we need to connect to it. And now we are in our environment. We can use it. We can do whatever we want in it. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a new function, again, using this Knative function, uh, uh, functions project. For that, we, we will go into separate directory. We create our function directory called the spiderize because we want to bring some spiders into our rainbows. And then we use this command func create pointing to a repository that contains some templates. In this case, we are using a template that is called spiders, and that allows us to bring all the things that we need to draw spiders on top of our rainbows. Once the function is created, in this case using the Go programming language, we can change the code, we can modify it any way we want, but we don't have time for that now, so we are just going to deploy it using func deploy. When we run func deploy, uh, this is using again this project that is called Cloud Native Build Packs to transform the source code of the function into a container image, so the developer doesn't need to worry about how that transformation happens. And it gives the platform team the ability to curate how that process works. By the end of this command, we are going to get a URL down there in the, in the screen, where we are going to click, and we are going to see our function deployed in our environment. So if we click into that link, we should be able to see that now we have a spider, a spider on top of our rainbow in our development environment. So trendy. It's pretty, pretty hip. I feel so cool right now. 
So what we just saw is Mauricio connecting to the development environment with B cluster connect commands. And that environment already has Knative installed into it. So Mauricio could immediately use the func CLI to create and deploy an application without any Docker file or any YAML. And the platform and platform team helped enable this sweet, sweet developer experience by not only providing that development environment, but by providing templates to get started in a quick and easy way, and then providing build packs to automate the build of source code to container image in a company happy way. There you go. Okay, so we saw a couple of ways now that the platform and platform team can improve the developer experience and the development lifecycle. But now, how can the platform team help that finished application find its way to production? So you mean that we cannot push straight to production? <laughs> I really wanted to push. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Maurice. Your developers under no circumstances <sighs> should be pushing straight to production. Uh, instead, we're going to rely again on our heroes, the platform and platform team. This time, they're going to provide tools and best practices to help that application find its way to production. So in this example, we have a GitOps approach to do that. So we have the production environment configuration stored in a Git repo, and we're going to use a GitOps tool like Argo CD. And Argo CD will watch that Git repo, and if any changes are made, they're going to sync that change to the production environment. So then when our application team is ready for the Spiderize application to see the spotlight, they submit a pull request. And then automated testing happens, and when all those tests are green, the pull request is merged, Argo sees the change in the Git repository, and then the application is deployed. There you go. So let's see that in action. And for that, I will walk to my computer to try to do something. It will never work, right? <laughs> so we are going to take our function into our production environment. And our production environment is actually rainbowsasaservice.com. So if you go to that website, it's actually working there. And we have configured this production environment using a GitOps approach, as Whitney mentioned. And we have this repository called KubeCon Production in my GitHub account, where we are configuring the application using Knative Serving here. That's why we have a single YAML just to configure the entire thing. So if we want to apply changes to this uh, application, again, as we mentioned, we will have a pull request with those changes. In this case, we want to add the spiders modifications that we just created. And this is where the platform kicks off, right? Like this is where we need all the validations to make sure that these changes will actually run in our production environment. So performance test, integration test, all the things that you need to do will be validated here. When this is ready, we can actually merge this pull request to apply these changes into our live environment. So uh, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So if you access Rainbow as a service a bit ago, now you can access again. Uh, as, because as soon as these changes are done and these changes are synced, we should be able to you know, see all the changes applied into production. And if it's that true, I should be able to refresh here in my production environment there in the screen. And there we go. We took all the spider from our development to our production environment. <laughs> hey! <laughs> It happened. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. So bleeding edge rainbow technology. We got uh, there you go. the spider rainbow tag on Twitter is trending so hard right now. There you go. All right. So to recap the whole demo, first we use that friendly, friendly platform API to a self-service provision a development environment. Then, because Knato is already pre-installed into it, we use the Knato func CLI command to get that spider, the create and deploy the spiderized application with no Docker file and no YAML. Then the platform and platform team helped our application find its way to production in a safe and automated way. So Whitney, what do we want people to take away from this beautiful presentation? <laughs> the big thing to remember from this application is that platform teams exist to manage all the complexity of getting an application into production. And this frees up application teams to do what they do best, which is to write code. So specifically, platform teams do this by collaborating with the application team to understand what they need and what their pain points are, and then to, um, to add that knowledge into the platform API where the application team can access it in a self-service way. There you go. The platform team, it also improves developer experience by encoding things like best practices, architectural patterns, security and governance policies into the platform team, into the platform itself, so that the application team can access, doesn't even need to worry about it. 
And finally, the platform and platform team help to automate the path to production in a safe way. So the bottom line here is platforms and platform teams are there to make application development teams happier and more efficient. And they will take care of taking all the changes and all the cool features that they build safely into our production environment. So one more thing before we go. There is that GitHub URL there where you can actually run all these examples in your laptops or in your Kubernetes clusters. I strongly recommend you to play with these technologies and see how this works. And that's what we got. That's, that's it. We got. Thank you Thank so you much, much, everyone. Thank you.